Hello everyone. In this tutorial, the part one of the series, we are going to talk about human DNA basics. And I will try to make everything clear about the DNA part of humans. So the very first thing we want to discuss here is how exactly is the DNA located? So let's talk about that first. So this is our cell basically and obviously our entire human body is made up of many, many millions of cells. We have cells in our hair, in our skin, in our eyes, in our tongue, everywhere. So in every cell, we have something called a nucleus, right? So you know that nucleus is basically the core of the cell, which manages pretty much everything. So it, you can call it as the heart of the cell. So inside the nucleus, we have some chromosomes floating around. So these cross marks, so this, this thing, they are like chromosomes. So DNA is basically organized in the chromosome. So inside the chromosome, we have this nice DNA organized and packed. So if I describe it a, bit, a little bit more detail, so we have the cell, we have nucleus inside the cell, we have chromosome inside nucleus, and we have DNA nicely packed inside the chromosome. So every human cell has a structure and chromosomes are just organized form of DNA, basically. Oh, I actually forgot to mention one thing. The full form of DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, why it is called deoxy, why it is called ribonucleic acid, those things I will not discuss here because those are part of chemistry. Here, I am mainly going to focus on the biology part and that should be good enough to read bioinformatics papers and other things. So, we don't have six chromosome pairs like shown in the figure because I mean this figure is just for demonstration purpose. In reality we have 23 chromosome or quantic pairs so quantic is just another name for chromosomes and in different research papers we are going to see the quantic name used instead of chromosomes. So 22 of those chromosomes are actually called autosomes so they are called autosome and one pair is called sex chromosome. So I will tell you why. First of all the 22 autosomes that, that are actually being shown right here, they are not responsible for determining sex. So whether you are male, female, that is not determined by the 22 autosome pairs. That is basically very similar between uh, both male and female. Those, those autosomes mainly determine metabolism, your eyesight, your hair color, and many different things, like everything that is related to physiology and your human body and functionality. The only pair of sex chromosome, the one pair of sex chromosome is the one that determines whether you are female or male. So if you are female, those chromosomes will be XX. That pair of chromosomes will be XX. And if you are male, it will be XY. That's it. Okay. Now the thing is, this actually means something. This actually means we actually have a pair of everything. Okay. So it's not single. So everything we have, every location we have in the DNA, it is actually not single. It is actually paired. So one of that comes from the father and one of that comes from the mother, right? So when, when I'm saying 22 autosome pairs, one of those pairs actually comes from the father and the other one comes from the mother. And this is why we are actually called diploid. So this entire architecture is called diploid, the diploid structure. So the singular form is haploid. It is called diploid because everything is a pair and when we say that we are talking about a pair of something related to DNA, we talk about a pair of alleles. So alleles is basically the same thing. When someone tells you that we have, we are talking about some alleles, some pair of alleles, you are immediately going to think of this thing, that it's a pair of some DNA location, one coming from father, one coming from mother. And finally, each of these pair of alleles is made up of double-stranded DNA. This is very, very crucial information because when we talk about this double-stranded DNA, so I will talk about this in the next slide in more detail. So DNA is double-stranded, so you can see one strand right here and you can see the other strand going right here, right? So it's double-stranded. Now double-stranded DNA and diploid are two different things. Diploid simply means that we have a pair of everything, every chromosome, every gene and everything. And each of those pair, so each allele, each one of these allele is actually made up of double-stranded DNA. Okay, so there is double-stranded DNA in allele number one, there is double-stranded DNA in allele number two. That is the difference. Okay, so now let's look at more into the DNA structure. So as I said before, DNA is double helix and how it is double helix, let's discuss that a little bit. So first of all, you can see one strand starting from here, the five prime end, and it ends right here in the three prime end. This is uh, strand number one or helix number one. Then there is this other one which starts here, the five prime end. Five prime is always the starting end and it ends right here in the three prime end 
Okay, fine. Now, why is it called five prime? Why is it called three prime? It is again based on the biochemistry. So I don't want to go into the molecular or chemical part of the bioinformatics because that is not really relevant for the bioinformatics guys, for the computational guys. And you are not going to see a lot of references for those if you are working on bioinformatics. So I will skip those. Now, you can see that there are nicely colored like ribbons or sticks joining between the two strands. Suppose the blue one is joining with the black one, red one is joining with the green one and so forth. So if you look closely, there are four different colors here. Uh, blue, black, red and green. These four different colors. So there are actually four different types of bases that consist the entire DNA strands and they are called adenine, guanine, cytosine and thiamine. So A, T, C and G. That's it. So A, adenine will always bind with thiamine. So A will always bind to T and C will always bind to G. So if we know one of the strands, we can automatically guess the complementary strand. So the other strand is also known as complementary strand. So let me show an example right here. So for example, maybe in one of the strands, it may be in this 5 prime, 3 prime strand, we have A, A, C, A, G, G, T, and we'll continue. Then in the other strand, we are going to have T, T, G, T, C, C, A, because A always binds to T and C always binds to G. So this is the complementary strand. And you have to remember that TNA is a very long string. It is basically 3 billion base pair. So it is 3 into 10 to the power 9, basically. So it is extremely, extremely large. Okay. And these 3 billion base pairs are actually found in every cell, right? In every cell. That is how magnificent we are as a creation. Now, also want to mention one other thing that these are bases. So when I'm saying base pairs, this is one base pair. This is this is two base pair. This is three base pair. And so there are 3 to 10 to the power 9 base pairs in the human cells, in each human cell, which has the DNA. Okay. Now, another thing I want to discuss now, that is how exactly is DNA organized? So previously I talked about that DNA is organized in the nucleus in the form of chromosomes, but how does it actually look like? That is what I'm going to discuss now. So it looks something like this. You can see this nice rubbery yellow balls. So these balls are called histones. So histone protein, basically, these are proteins. So what is protein? I will discuss that in later part of the series because uh, gradually I need to build that were basic. I cannot just suddenly talk about protein right now. So the DNA nicely wrapped around these histone proteins in the cell nucleus. And you can see some measurements here, like how far are each of the histones and how many base pairs are there in the linker parts, etc. So the only thing you need to actually remember here is this line. The above measurements that, are, that I'm showing right here are pretty much fixed for all cells and for all humans. So they are not variable in different cells. But, but this is very important. How tightly the DNA strands are wrapped around the histone may differ widely based on many different factors. So maybe this part is bind, bound loosely and this part is bound more tightly and so on and so forth. And another thing is, although every DNA in all cells of a particular human are exactly the same. So, I mean, this is something very crucial information. You may think that maybe your DNA in the hair cell and your DNA in the lips are actually very different. That is not true. Actually, they are all exactly the same. So when I'm talking about these 3 billion base pairs, they're exactly the same for all the DNA in all the cells. Now, obviously you're wondering, then how come the different parts of our uh, human body look so different? That has something to do with how tightly the DNA is actually wrapped around the histone proteins. Because that is something which determines something called gene expression. Okay, So different cells in your human body have different gene expression. So different DNA which are situated inside different cells of your human body have very different gene expressions. And that is why your different cells actually look different. Okay, Although they have the exactly the same base pairs. Now, obviously, you are wondering what is gene expression and why does gene expression differ? Again, these answers I will gradually give in the next, next part of the series. You have to stay tuned because if I suddenly talk about gene expression right now, it will be a little bit, what should I say, difficult for you to handle and you will be puzzled like what's going on now. So I'm gradually going at a slow pace. So the only thing we need to know here is that every DNA in all cells of a particular human are exactly the same, but still they look very different. They function very different because of the difference in gene expression. And one of the reasons why gene expressions differ in different cells is because how tightly the DNA is wrapped around 
in the histones in different parts of the histones okay so last thing i want to mention is obviously there are different humans in the whole planet and different races we have asian european we have black people and other things so their dna is very very similar so there is very slight difference in between their dna and that difference can be attributed to many different things which again i will mention in the subsequent tutorials just one thing i want to mention here is that dna across different humans are actually extremely similar and the difference is like 0.001% or something like that and that tiny amount of difference can create a large difference in how we look how our body structure looks how our metabolism works etc so thanks thanks for your time see you in the next tutorial where i will talk about how you can read the dna how you can read the dna sequence from the dna okay thanks see you in the next tutorial